Hi, I'm Gary Boysen. I'm the director here at the Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing at the Central University of Technology. My field of expertise is in additive manufacturing and I studied mechanical engineering as well as industrial engineering. I grew up on a farm outside Bloemfontein and matriculated at uh, Jim Fisher High School in Bloemfontein. Um, growing up on a farm from a young age, I, I learned how to work with my hands and uh, to build things and to design things. And, and that was my passion from the beginning of my uh, career. At school I did the normal subjects, uh, math, science, uh, uh, languages, uh, biology from everything. The maths and science really helped me um, with my career up to where I am now. Um, it, it laid the foundation um, that, that I can do problem solving um, and design work. Ten years ago I was diagnosed with a condition um, and the doctors gave me ten months to live. And that was one of my biggest obstacles in life and that's the that's the reason why I have a passion to help people. Um, I think you can make a difference even if, if doctors can only give you a certain period to live. You can make a difference to somebody's life or many people's life in that period that was given to you. What is very important for, for grade 12 learners is just to relax. Um, follow your heart and, and, and really believe um, that the choices that you will make, that you will succeed in that. I, I think it's very important. In my case, I wasn't the best student in, 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 or the best scholar. Um, my, my marks were, were average. But when I started to, to study in, in the field that I um, decided on mechanical engineering, that was when I started to score distinctions in, in, in subjects. Um, on, in school I was an average student, but I think when you start studying something that you really like and have passion for that, you, you will succeed in that. My current work is focused on 3D printing and research and product development in this area. We are assisting academia as well as uh, industry, uh, large industries in new product development. We use this technology to manufacture prototypes, parts, end-use products. And in this case, you will see we use this technology to actually manufacture a titanium implant, a biocompatible titanium implant. From my side, I think it's, it's really great to, to be able to help people, to use engineering on the one side, and then your engineering background and skills, but, but then to to play a meaningful role in somebody's life, to improve their quality of life. When I started uh, studying for engineering, I never thought I would be uh, doing medical work. I was thinking more on designing cars and designing planes and things like that. And then luckily with this technology, it's, uh, it opened up the opportunity for us to do medical applications. We are manufacturing spinal cages with a very fine lattice structure. You can see the very fine, it's a crisscross structure. And this structure uh, encourages then bone growth through the implant, where the implant then is, is attached to the bone and not just attached by the screws. And you can see the different variety of components that we are producing. Furthermore, we also do, uh, this is quite new in South Africa, uh, dental 3D printing, where we can produce a dental frame for people that uh, lost their teeth and can't afford the very expensive dental implants where we can produce on one platform like this different patients' uh, geometries and you can end up with a product like this that is patient-specific, custom design for the patient. So cancer of the head and neck is really in your face. Uh, people are, are, are walking around with ears that was uh, removed or mid-face. Um, these people are are moved out of the society. People are looking down on them. And we are trying from our side, using 3D printing, to not only make the internal frame, but also to then manufacture the external silicon clip-on face, that we can at least give dignity back to these patients, where they are judged at this stage. Uh, 
some of these patients will tell us they will commit suicide if we couldn't help them to, to, to actually go back into society. Um, hi, my name is Sizwen Timane. Uh, I'm a junior project engineer working for the Centre of uh, Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing. Uh, CUT is the Central University of Technology Free State, which is based in uh, Bloemfontein. I'm using a software called Thrematic, but I incorporate it together with other two other softwares, which is one of them is called Mimix, the other one is called Magix. And so the one that I'm designing on currently, it's Thrematic. As you can see right here, this is an STL file of, the, of a skull of the patient that I'm working on. And as you can see, this is the defect on their mandible. We are currently supplying a variety of different uh, prototypes and in-use products to industry. Anything from new kettles, new enclosures, uh, these TV uh, enclosures, um, uh, new mirrors for cars uh, in car development. What's important with this technology is it really can react to pandemics. In, in the case of the COVID uh, pandemic that, that, that came into the world and then also into our country, was that there was a need for 3D printed swabs. Uh, swabs that, that currently more more flexible than the traditional, the conventional manufactured ones. So again, we used 3D printing, design, advanced manufacturing to come up with this uh, clinician respirator that was developed here at CUT. So in industry, you will find desktop 3D printers uh, that, uh, and you will find them now in schools and fab labs, fabrication laboratories. And then you get dye in 3D printers. The desktop 3D printers is really good for concept 3D printing. Uh, to doing prototypes. I am designing today, tonight, I would like to just manufacture the part to show tomorrow to a, po a possible client. But at the end, if you want to produce functional components that like needs, in, in the case of spinal cages, that needs to go into a patient with strict regulatory um, requirements, then it's important to go to the higher end uh, manufacturing uh, technologies. We would like to establish new products, uh, new niche products that can only be manufactured in this way. And then we can link with young, upcoming young engineers to say, don't you want to start your business in this field? And that's one of our goals as a university to, to put back in society. You will find large corporations like Boeing, Airbus, that are flying parts at this stage. They are looking for upcoming young engineers to join them uh, with new design thinking that can design for this process. None of my days are ever the same because we, we receive different inquiries from a medical implant to a commercial product to a design that, that needs to be conducted. We work as a great team. Uh, we have designers that can actually sit with the, the surgeons and capture their requirements. And then on the other side, we, we can then take this, uh, these designs and then put it in the machine, it can be manufactured. I, uh, when I was in, in metric, I studied um, in the science stream. Uh, my main subject, if I may put it that way, were mathematics, physical sciences and life, uh, and life sciences. And then when I completed my metric, I came to study at the Central University of Technology Free State where I studied mechanical engineering. Um, the first qualification that I did was a three-year uh, three course which was National Diploma in Mechanical Engineering and then after that I studied further on and did my BTEC for one year uh, in Mechanical Engineering. We have quality engineers that, that look after the processes uh, that can actually make sure that we adhere to all the regulatory requirements. Um, biomedical engineers are also very good, quite uh, suited for, for, for this uh, application. On the quality engineer side, um, you can actually study quality engineering uh, because it's more a systems engineering approach or uh, Industrial engineering uh, could also be a field that, that you can enter. It was difficult for me to decide 
which engineering to go and study. Um, I was between electrical engineering and mechanical engineering and what I decided um, was to go and to go to these career uh, events and go and have a look and go to industry to actually have a look what is the electronic or electrical engineer doing and a mechanical engineer. And still the mechanical engineering was my preferred choice. I started um, studying mechanical engineering, undergraduate, also completed my master's degree in mechanical engineering. And then because I'm in the field of in, um, additive manufacturing, I think it was important for me to also be exposed to something else and that is why I decided to, to do my PhD in industrial engineering. That more focuses on, um, it more focuses on uh, systems engineering approach, different steps, how do you map out the process chain. But I think the most important is you can take any journey but at the end of you have a goal that you set for yourself and you want to be the best you know, um, in what you do. Even though you are studying mechanical engineering, you can do medical implants. And that's why, what I enjoy most of my work, is to make a difference in somebody's life. Not just about the money, or to, at the end of the month, to just have a, uh, a big paycheck. But at the end, to, to, to actually help somebody. So in the work that we are doing, we would like to um, see engineers in theatre and we would like to see clinicians working of our engineers. That's very important because the interdisciplinary uh, approach on, on problem solving is very, very important for us to, to get to a good product. We are working with um, occupational therapists, physiotherapists to, to actually understand the mechanics of, of muscles and the movement of arms that we can better develop a, a custom designed splint or a um, prosthetic hand uh, that is very important for us. Pursue your, your dreams and, and always have a dream that you work towards. It was uh, important for me to, to really do the best I could uh, with, uh, with my studying that I could get bursaries. Uh, my family couldn't afford for me to go to the university. What's very important is that you need to focus on, on where you want to end up. Uh, life is gonna actually throw a lot of things at you. Uh, you will get a lot of different obstacles. Um, but at the end, you must have one goal, you must have one dream, and you must work towards that dream.